Hi! In this video, we'll be talking about intravenous fluids, specifically on how to tag an IVF, how to use the monitoring sheet, and how to do the time taping. What are IV fluids? IV fluids are liquids injected into a person's veins through an intravenous tube. They prevent or treat dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Examples Dextrose 5% Lactated Ringer or D5LR Plain Lactated Ringer or PLR Plain Normal Saline Solution, 0.9% Sodium Chloride or what we call the PNSS Dextrose 5% Normal Saline Solution or D5NES The main purpose of IV tag is to communicate important information to medical professionals during the patient care process. While this information will typically be written down on the patient's chart, it is still important to label the source of the drug to avoid any medicine mix-ups. The parts of the IV tag includes the patient's name, the room or bed number, the name of the fluid or infusion that was ordered such as D5LR or PNSS, the medication slash additives to the said fluid such as oxytocin, the flow rate of the IV fluid, the bottle number, if it's the first bottle, second, and so on. The time in which the IVF is started to be infused, the duration of the infusion, and the time when it is due. You also have to include your name, and the name of the other nurse on duty by writing it down or using your name stamp, together with your signature. Suppose that a doctor has ordered to start D5LR, plus 10 units of oxytocin, with a flow rate of 30 drops per minute, to be infused for 8.3 hours. The IVF monitoring sheet is designed to follow the process of giving intravenous infusion. It helps monitor and ensure the administration of an accurate amount of liquid being infused and consumed via IV during the hospitalization. In the IVF monitoring sheet, the patient's data needs to be filled up first, such as name, age, attending physician, sex, civil status, room number or bed number, and the hospital number. The table has 11 columns which a nurse should fill in. The date the fourth was ordered. The amount or content of the fluid. The flow rate ordered by the doctor. The time when the infusion was started. The IV site or the location whether it's right or left arm. Next is the infusion or the name of fluid that was being administered to the patient according to the doctor's order. After the said infusion, you also need to put the time when the infusion was finished, the amount absorbed by the patient, the bottle number was at bottle 1, 2, or 3, the amount that was left on the bottle after the said time, and lastly, the date it was terminated or consumed.
Why is it important to have time taping in any IV fluids? It is essentially important to have time taping to help ensure that an IV solution is being infused at the prescribed rate. It also helps facilitate calculation of fluid intake. In doing the time taping, you may need to take down the IVF amount, the flow rate, the time it was started, and the duration of the infusion. In here, you may need to record the amount that was left on the bottle every hour. Supposing that the IVF was administered at 6 a.m., and was ordered to run for 8.3 hours. You just need to add the number of hours that it was supposed to be infused to the time it was started. In here 6 a.m. added with 8.3 hours would result to 2.18 p.m., which was the time that the IVF is supposed to finish. And given that the amount ordered was 1000 ml with a flow rate of 30 drops per minute which is equivalent to 120 cc per hour. You just have to subtract the amount per hour to the remaining amount in the bottle. In here 1000 ml minus 120 ml equals to 880 ml. Meaning, that in the first hour after the start of the infusion, the remaining amount should be 880 ml.